What's up, everybody, and welcome in to another episode here. We have a brand new DA in Los Angeles, which is a big deal if you're the Menendez brothers or the family members of the Menendez brothers because he has to make a decision. Is he going to continue on with the recommendation of a resentencing? Is he going to support that? In the future, we know what a big deal it is. We've done videos talking about what a big deal it was that the DA's office did come behind them and join with their lawyers and family members and the Menendez brothers themselves recommending that they be resentenced and basically released semi soon. Or will he take a stand against it? Has he made a decision yet? And what does he need to make that decision? He gets interviewed. And we're going to listen to this 10 minute interview and take a look at what his campaign was. What did he run on? And will that affect his decision? in this scenario. So make sure you guys hit the like button. Let me know your questions in the chat section and in the comments, because uh, I can't wait to hear what you guys think about this one and where you think this one's going based on the new DA. So the first um, important issue here is this shouldn't be political. And we mentioned it. The prior DA said it wasn't political. Uh, multiple questions were asked about it. He was campaigning. He was trying to win. He came in at a time, I guess, was not hard on crime. Um, I think his kind of what his reputation was. The people didn't like that, didn't feel like it was as safe as it used to be. He's out now in somewhat of a landslide victory for this new DA. And Nathan Hockman is his name. And we're going to hear exactly what he thinks about the Menendez brother case. And then we're going to look at what he campaigned on, like I said, to see, can we get some insight on what he's going to do? That was George Gasco, the outgoing district attorney in Los Angeles County. Now we have Nathan Hockman. We've reestablished our communication. Hopefully, Nathan, you can uh, hear us. Uh, let's start with your gut, gut. What's your opinion right now? I know you want to do some more research, but uh, what's your take on the Menendez brothers and what should we expect from you and your office now that you'll be in charge starting on December 2nd? Thank you for this opportunity. And I'd love to give you my, uh, my two, uh, two cents impression about the case based on remembering snippets of it years ago. And uh, I haven't actually even seen the Netflix docuseries. Uh, but uh, I would be doing a disservice to the Menendez brothers, to the victim families, to the public, if I do anything other than a thorough review of the facts and the law before I weigh in on the case. I mean, in order to actually be informed of this case, you've got to review thousands of pages of prison records that I don't have access to at this point. You should review the thousands of pages of transcripts from two months long trials. You should talk to the prosecutors, law enforcement, the defense counsel, and any victim member, your family members that want to speak to you. And only at that point will you have the factual record to then apply to the legal standards, render an opinion and defend that opinion in court. Now, I don't know if that was a shot taken at the prior DA's office. I would assume and I would like to think, I would hope, that they did review the transcripts, that they did review the jail records, that they did all that research and work. It sure sounded like it at the press conference we watched together. So I hope they did, but it almost sounded like a little bit of a shot, like they didn't even do the research and they made this decision. He didn't say that, but there's some context later as to why he think this all happened with the Menendez brothers in the timing that it did happen. So... More coming. Do you think that it was a political stunt by Gascon to get out in front of the cameras right before the election? He was down in the polls um, and, and put his name in front and his face in front of this issue for maybe people that wanted to see the Menendez brothers out. Yes, I do. And the reason is, is that Gascon got the original habeas in May of 2023, 16 months ago. He got the initial. So he says, absolutely, no hairs across his tongue. Does he think this was a political issue for the prior DA? And one of his reasons is he got the petition way back in May of 2023. Now, my guess is the, the, the outgoing DA could say, you just said, we have to take our time. We have to go through everything, go through the transcripts. And that's what we were doing. That's why it took a month and a half. If you want to see the best in people and hope for the best, then maybe that's true. But it doesn't seem like that's what this new DA thinks was going on. Initial resentencing request in 2024. So if he really cared about the Menendez's and wanted to begin the resentencing process, he could have done it eight to 16 months before 
He could have even started it right after the election because even by losing the election, he was still the district attorney till December 1st. So him doing it 12 days before the election when he was 30 points down and he had basically run out of money, uh, cast a cloud of credibility over the decision. People don't know if it was the just decision or just a political ploy. And that's something I will avoid by doing the extensive and thorough review of the facts and the law before I, I weigh in on the matter. So I agree with him and think it's important to do the extensive research, obviously, on the facts and the law. But to say he didn't do it, but he took so much time in making the decision, I don't know. That could be that could work for and against you. But the timing sure is suspect. 12 days before the election, he's down 30 points. He's running out of money. Was this a Hail Mary? Was this a last ditch, last ditch effort? And then some scary verbiage, if you're the Menendez brothers or the Menendez family that wants them freed, he said, was this actually the just and correct decision or was this just a political ploy? And you can take the step further that if this district attorney believes it was a political ploy, he will change the position of the DA's office. He will change their position in front of the court and in the places where it matters, in the resentencing board. Now, if he feels it was the just and correct decision based on the evidence in the law, then I think he will continue to support the same proposition that the Menendez brothers should be resentenced and released very soon. But he is definitely not taking the stance that he is going to support their resentencing and thinks they should get out now. He's not going to take that stance right now. He still has to do a lot of research and... It seems like he's worried there's a cloud of politics over this decision and over all of this. And my guess is he doesn't like that, especially if his predecessor wanted it and it was something he's pushing for. Hopefully he doesn't make it political by doing the other opposite just because it's what his predecessor did. It definitely doesn't seem like it so far with this guy in how he is speaking and how he's looking at this. You won in a landslide. You held that 30% through the election. But do you think that people voted for you because they didn't want the Menendez brothers out? Because let's face it, you were up against a, a polarizing individual in George Gascon, who um, is, uh, you know, post George Floyd, he, he, he really hit with some voters. He was elected, uh, obviously. But do you think that the Menendez brothers had anything to do with people voting for or against you? A very carefully crafted question there, and I don't blame him for it, but he's like, hey, you won, and you won by a lot, and you won right after this guy got up there and said, I'm freeing the Menendez brothers. Do you think a vote for you was a vote against the Menendez brothers? And does that matter? These are your people. These are This is your community. They want to make your community safe. Do you think they put you in charge to make sure the Menendez brothers stay behind bars to keep their community safer? I think it's a very, very good and well-asked and well-thought-out, maybe not, maybe not eloquent, but, but it was a very good question, I think, for this new DA, and I want to know the answer. I would think it had very, very little to do with any voter who voted for or against me. And there's a simple answer. He thinks it had very, very little to do with anybody that voted for or against him. I tend to agree. The timing of it really didn't give people a lot of time to process. Um, and if they were going to vote for him anyways, and after everything, you know, the attorneys that represent the Menendez family said, the DA's office, it's not just the lead DA, it's some of the other district attorneys, assistant district attorneys that felt the same way about the Menendez brothers. He didn't come out and campaign on, we're going to look at his uh, page, but he didn't campaign on keeping the Menendez brothers behind bars, right? That wasn't a big part of his campaign. So I, I would tend to agree with him that it really was not a big part of this election and that if it was and people really wanted and felt strongly about getting the Menendez brothers out, maybe it would have worked in the other guy's favor but it didn't, and he is not going to hold that as being a big political issue, which I think is good for this case. Let's look at it and make our decisions based on the facts and the law, not on politics, not on feelings, not on things that are not appropriate for this arena. I think what voters were voting for was safety. Turns out that safety was the crossover issue of 2024. And I know that by having spoken to thousands of people across Los Angeles, from across the political spectrum, ultra-left liberals, independents, conservative Republicans, black, white, Latino, Asian groups, every religious group out there, and from across the 4,000 miles of LA County. And I'm here to tell you they don't agree on much, but they do agree that George Gascon's social experiment with their safety failed, that they felt less safe today than they did when he came into office, and they, they were ready for change. They were telling me throughout my 
my travels. Enough is enough. They were tired of living in fear. And that's fear not just uh, at the experiential level, it's the objective level. The California Department of Justice put in its statistics that showed that violent crime, hate crimes, property crimes, fentanyl poisoning, shoplifting are up either double or triple digits. So I think safety is what was driving voters to vote for me ultimately. That's, that's not good when you're the DA, right? Not the particular the particulars of the Menendez case. So what happens now with the Menendez case? There's a hearing on December 11th. Is, uh, is there going to be a delay? Are you going to push for a delay? Because your office has filed, technically, under Gascon. You've already filed the motion for the recall. And uh, two things here. So what's going to happen short term? And tell us, if you would, uh, uh, how this works. 1172 in California, most people around the country are like, what? They were sentenced to life without parole. What's going on here? But California has a mechanism <laughs> for people, uh, I if it's recommended, to be resentenced or even have uh, their conviction vacated and then re uh, resentenced on, uh, on a, a, lo a lower charge. So talk us through, if you would. Certainly. So here's what, what the three tracks are in the Menendez case. There's first a habeas track. That's the motion that was filed in May of 2023. That has a hearing the, the week of November 25th before I assume office. And that's the, the track that's looking at whether the new evidence that's presented uh, can justify a new trial. So that's on one track. Second track is a clemency petition that has been made directly to the governor. Governor has no deadline on that. He could have weighed in and given the uh, Menendez's clemency all the way back when he started in 2017. He can do it later today if he wants to, or at any time or never. There's never, a, there's not a deadline on clemency. But assuming that doesn't happen, it lands on my desk the week of December 2nd when I start, then there is this resentencing issue. Now, the way resentencing works is that on December 11th, there'll be a hearing. If I'm ready to proceed and have done that extensive factual and legal review, we'll proceed. If not from December 2nd to December 11th, that's enough time for the extensive review. So maybe is he indicating that there might be a delay? It might not be happening as quickly as we thought it was going to happen. I don't know. I might ask for some additional time, but I've got 34 years of criminal justice experience with hundreds of cases under my belt. I can read a record expeditiously, even if a lengthy one, and be ready as soon as possible, whether it's December 11th or soon thereafter. Let's assume for a moment. I can see why this guy won, right? I don't know anything about him really, but he seems pretty confident and, and hard nosed as a prosecutor. Moment that the judge were to grant the resentencing motion. Effectively, what that would do is throw the issue to the parole board. They would then have a parole hearing. If the parole board, for instance, were to grant parole, then it goes to the governor's desk. He has 120 days to either agree with it, send it back to the full parole board, or reverse that and keep the Menendez's behind bars. An example is that, of that is when the Sirhan Sirhan, the assassin of Robert F. Kennedy, he was in 2022. Originally, the parole board granted parole. The, the governor ultimately reversed that grant of parole. So the Menendez's have these three tracks that, that this case is proceeding on. Uh, some of these tracks would either get them that new trial, get them out immediately, or go through this whole resentencing parole governor process. Uh, if they were to prevail, it would happen months and months later. If you disagree with what George Gascon was implementing and with the office, I mean, you even have a, a unit in your office for resentencing because it does come up and you have uh, people dedicated to it. Let's say you disagree. They don't check the boxes that you want. Hasn't the motion already been filed and it should be up to a judge or can you pull it back? So again, I, I, I hesitate to speculate on what I'm going to do before I do that thorough review of the facts and the law. But the various courses of action are, are just that. You can agree with what you can supplement the record. You can seek to, cha make, to change the record. But it, it doesn't pay for me to speculate on what I'm going to do before I do this extensive review. He, he definitely can disagree with it. <coughs> and then it creates some murky water, right? If he disagrees with it, if you, the, the prior DA said he was going to allow people to present to the court there because there were some people in his office that 
agreed with the resentencing, some people in his office that didn't agree, you could do something like that and have more people disagree than you originally thought and the judge would have to make the decision. It could really create a murky situation. I'll tell you what my guess is going to be, and I'm going to just purely speculate and guess based on this review, based on what we've heard and what we've read um, so far about what's going on in this case as to what I think is going to happen after the interview. And I choose not to speculate. A lot of people will be uh, obviously uh, watching. Are you? Are have you been uh, in in contact? Uh, I know you want to talk to uh, the attorneys representing the family, the family members. Have you done any of that work, will, or will you wait till the second? I'll wait to the second because you want to have the full evidentiary record before you and study it before you go ahead and and talk to prosecutors, defense attorneys, victim family members. And, so you make sure you ask them the right questions. I mean, it, it does a disservice to the Dennis brothers, to the uh, you know, and to uh, the victim family member if you do anything less than a thorough review, which is what I would do, not just in the Menendez case, but quite candidly in all cases that end up on my desk. That's the right answer. Fair enough. Um, Nathan Ackman, thank you. Uh for joining us and uh, it's getting dark there in Los Angeles. It's, the sun has set. It's five. All right. So uh, let's take a look here at his, I think this is his campaign page. All right. So what's he running on? Restore our safety. Blueprint for justice will restore the purpose of the district attorney's office, restore the integrity and independence of the district attorney. Restore the trust in the district attorney. Restore the partnership between law enforcement and the district attorney's office. Restore the priority of protecting victims' interests. Restore opportunities for rehabilitation for those who suffer from mental illness and other drug addiction and or drug addiction. Restore opportunities for those who go to prison. Okay? So if you just want to focus on restore our safety, then maybe you say, oh, hard on crime guy. He's not going to let the Menendez brothers out but he's also, as he should, running on restore opportunities for those who go to prison. And in this <clears throat> interview, he definitely did not close the door on it. So that leads me just to my guess, okay? this A million things can happen. We don't know a lot. You know, all of the potential um, qualifications I can uh, just possibly give for this because, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. But if I had to guess, just reading the tea leaves, seeing what's happening, listening to this interview... I hope he does this thorough investigation. I want to feel confident that he's making the decision he thinks is in the best interest of justice and fairness, the victims, um, the defendants, everybody involved, the community. If I had to guess, there will still be support for the resentencing of the Menendez brothers. I, I hope and I think he may still allow arguments for both sides to be made uh, before the judge. And we'll see if he has the same stance as the prior DA that they don't go in front of the parole board um, and they don't make any arguments there. I would expect he probably has a similar stance on that. But I would expect that he is not going to try to block it. He could. And if he does, that's a very bad sign for the Menendez brothers. I would be surprised at that, though. I would be. I would be surprised. Based on everything I've heard, read, and seen, including that interview, um, That that's just my stance on it. But I want to know what yours is in the comment section. Hit the like button if you guys are still following this case and want me to keep following until, if and until, they are resentenced and potentially let out. Um, it interests me, right? It's something so different that... We don't usually see, especially on a high high profile case, and it's something we can learn from, um, something we can get behind. Very different for me, right? It's a California specific thing, um, but you know I've enjoyed learning about it and talking with you guys about it. But let me know what you think. Um, but that's all we got for this one. So until next time, I'm out of here. Thanks for watching another episode of The Lawyer You Know. If you enjoyed the episode, please hit the thumbs up and share with your friends who may be interested here on YouTube, and don't forget to subscribe. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. And don't forget to check out the Lawyer You Know podcast with new seasons dropping every quarter. If you have a case you want to talk to us about, if it's a personal injury case, wrongful death, catastrophic injury, car accident, or slip and fall case, please email us at lawyeryouknow at gmail.com. And of course, all these links I just mentioned are included in the description below on this episode and every episode. So until next time, this is Peter Tragos, the lawyer you know.